Hi guys and welcome to this moment in design the show where we talk about UX UI and tech Today we're going to talk about a book called Responsive Web Design by Ethan Marcot Ethan Marcot is credited as the man who coined the term responsive design and responsive design is the approach through which most websites and some apps are designed and built today Now the book is pretty straightforward it gives you an overview of what responsive design is about why you should use it and how to use it this is a very developer focused book and by developer i mean front end developer so it has a lot of html and css snippets so if you have any experience in those areas this book will be much much easier for you to read that said the book also has a lot to offer to designers I was always curious about how my pixel based grid based designs and layouts translate into instructions or guidelines for developers and this book broke it down for me very simply now the contents of the book are a little dated and perhaps some of these techniques are not used by front end developers today but the basic principles remain the same The real difference between the approach of a designer and a front end developer towards web pages is that a designer will lay out a web page put in the contents of the web page separate out the contents based on usable legible distances they lay out the type in a hierarchy they'll make all of these design decisions on the fly on a case by case basis but for front end development everything has to be standardized and so This book serves as a good bridge for furthering a designer's understanding of how a front-end developer sees things. So, if you want your designs to translate exactly into front-end code as you see it in your mockups, give this book a read because it will teach you how developers parse your requirements and translate them into HTML and CSS. Now, about the writing style of the book, the author is quirky. He uses a lot of funny one-liners and expressions that make you smile and giggle at times. In such a serious academic book, this sort of approach and light-heartedness is very welcome. Sometimes the writing is a little difficult to follow, but like I said, if you have any experience in HTML and CSS, you'll probably find it easier. Now, this is an older book. I think the first edition came out in 2011, and it shows because some of the examples are a little dated. but the lessons themselves are mostly timeless the links to other works especially articles are very useful and i recommend that you give them a look now one of the points of concern for me is that the author doesn't advocate different size mockups for different size devices his approach is that you should design one mockup in one screen size and discuss it with your front end team pass it around and see what they have to say about how the other versions could be developed in my experience this is probably not the best approach since my front end team where i work demands mobile tablet and desktop versions of every site that i make this is a handbook about design details so don't expect it to go into design philosophy however towards the end the author does go into the ideas of it all a lot of the things that the book says are probably common practice for front end developers now it answers some interesting questions that most people don't think to ask like when should you use responsive and when should you not now here's a problem i have with the book the author advocates a mobile first design approach which i agree with and i think it's a very sensible approach but the example that he uses throughout the book to explain all of the concepts in the book is not mobile first it's actually desktop first here are some key things that i learned from the book forget pixels the mockups that you share with front end engineers should definitely be pixel based but you should understand the proportions and percentages of what you've given to them when you give front end engineers pixel widths as well as percentages it makes it much easier for them to build a responsive website Interestingly, this feature is built into most developer handoff tools like Zeppelin, Envision and so on. How to design in percentages is to basically mock up one size in pixels, then convert the grid into percentages and the text sizes into Ms and you have yourself one fluid breakpoint. Number 2. Content matters. Gutters don't. In the whole of the first chapter 
the author builds a page where he doesn't set the size of any gutters or even any columns. He just sets the size of the content areas as per the columns in the mockup and the rest takes care of itself. Number three, responsive images. The author makes a good point that in smaller screen sizes, highly detailed images are sometimes not very readable. So you can in fact load different images for smaller screen sizes as compared to larger ones. This means that a mobile device can use a simplified version of every graphic. And as we scale up the device width, the level of detail of the graphic can also increase. Number four, columns are logical entities. According to this book, a column is a dynamic width not a set position. So you do have column one, two, three, four, five, and so on in a desktop grid, but you can't really address them like that. If there is a first content area that stretches from the start of the first column to the end of the first column, it can only be defined by the distance between those two points or the width between those two points and not that it starts at column one and ends at column four. I think that this approach is quite different from how modern systems like Bootstrap work, wherein every column acts more like an address or an anchor to which you can pin items. Number five, there is no right size. There is no one right width for any breakpoint. A desktop breakpoint could be 960, 1024, 1440. It all depends on the context. And if it works, it works. Number six. The real canvas for a website is not the artboard of the design tool. The real canvas is the web browser in which it is going to be viewed. This is a dynamic canvas that can change in dimensions from device to device or even on the same device. All in all, I have to say that the book left me with a very empty feeling towards the end because although I did learn quite a bit and I refreshed on a lot of concepts that I'd long forgotten, it didn't give me that master key that unlocked responsive design for me. I think I'll have to do much more reading and research to figure out how to get it just right for all my projects. I recommend doing your own research in addition to this book and maybe trying your hands at Bootstrap. As always guys, if you liked this video, like the video and remember to follow, share and subscribe. Thank you.